All right, thanks, Dan. My name is Dan Amex, and, and I have a, an interest in looking at celebrities who have had the Urantiavar. The reason why I got into this was because the, for my formative years in my 20s, there was a lot of music and other bits of information that had the Urantia book um, as a core involved at different levels. And I didn't find this out until much later. One of the people that started this was a, a teacher of the Silva method of meditation and his name is Harry McKnight. Harry's since passed away, but he was a Urantia book student. And we talked about the origins of Silva mind development. And he made the comment that the Urantia book was in the bibliography. And I picked up my, my workbook and I went in the back and went, I remember seeing this. I saw this and it never piqued my interest enough to look it up. So it made me wonder how many other sources of of music and what other things in my youth were around me that brought me to this book silently, very subtly. Because when I found the book, it was in a bookstore and I happened to, I was going to this bookstore often. I'd get Ram Dass Be Here Now. I would uh, pick up all these different self-help books. And one day I walked in and I saw this book with a white dust cover. And I thought, who the hell would put a white dust cover on this? And I picked it up and started reading some of the bits and pieces in the beginning. Your local universe is Orvantan. Um, one of the things we have a great difficulty in getting spiritual language translated into your language. And that was uh, the thing that made me buy it. I also had a very strange dream prior to that, but I won't go into that here. So when, when, did, you, uh, when did you discover the Ranch book? Uh, I bought the book March 28th, 1978. The $27 check that I wrote to Walden Bookstore is still in my book. <laughs> wow. For whatever reason, I don't know. It's just, it, you know, I, curiosity. Um, but uh, I started looking around and, and I went to a Moody Blues concert and I thought, God, if they don't have the book, they need to have the book. And after the concert, I raced out of there with my, my wife and uh, stood in the area where the cars go by leaving. And we waited and waited and finally three um, limousines left. And as they were driving by, I held the Urantia book up so they could see it. Little did I know, they already had the Urantia book. And I found that out later. Uh, the album Seventh Sojourn is about Jesus's seventh bestowal. And there are lyrics, um, uh, one of the songs, I think it's You and Me, um, talks about the visions of our father touched by his loving son. All we are trying to say is we are all we've got. We cannot fail if we never stop, something like that. So this just fed the monster. I mean, I started looking around and just, uh, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who lived in New York and a friend of his, a guitar player, knew the guys in Steely Dan and said they were your rancher book readers. And my friend had no interest in it. Um, he just he, happened to be, they just like tried to introduce him to it or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I think so. He said, I'm not a joiner, but he brought it up because he saw the book on my, on my coffee table. He says, yeah, I've heard of that. I know that book. Steely Dan introduced me to it. <laughs> yeah. And on their, uh, Let's see, I have the albums, um, Can't Buy a Thrill was their first album, and uh, of course it's not going to be on the top of my stack here, I'll show you my stack in a moment. Uh, Can't Buy a Thrill has a song, um, 
turn that heartbeat over again. And on the, in the song, um, it says it's a solemn prayer for peace. And the part of the lyrics, oh, Michael, oh, Jesus, I've played a good, clean game. You know my reputation. Um, and then he says, uh, talks about turning the heartbeat over again, waking him up on the other side, which is really cool. Wow, Before, that's what that means. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, listen, uh, really listen to the lyrics. Um, and this is... Um, was this their first album? I think it was their first, first or second, but that was one of the, one of the bands. And some of these things, I hear the music and, uh, and all of a sudden the lyric makes sense to me. Um, it seems like quite a, quite a cool, uh, you know, coincidence that so many of these examples that you were like a, a, a serious fan already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love their music. It's really timeless. It doesn't fit in the regular genres. Um, and then there's uh, Spirit. And that's Randy California. This particular album, uh, Spirit of 76, there's on side four of two album, two record set, is the song Urantia. Uh, he was supposedly a well-known Urantia book reader. He passed away. Uh, he drowned, saving his son from drowning. So um, I remember the Urantia um, Foundation was suing, or not suing somebody, but told somebody they had to stop producing uh, Urantia labels on uh, his music. And that happened to be Steve Vai. And right on the, I think it was his first album, the uh, Urantia label is on there. It can be seen. And then sometimes on the back of some of the albums, when he's had to take the, the label off, it's on the, uh, the actual cover. Wow. So going through these, I mean, gosh, it's, there's so many, there's uh, the, I think it's a guitar player for Three Dog Night, um, Jimi Hendrix, there's a bi biography about him that talks about him reading the Arantia book. So did you hear the Three Dog Night guitar player story from separately from the story I heard? Um, yes. Wow. <laughs> what did you hear? Well, I, I really would be uh, creating problems if I said what I, where I heard it, but I heard um, that uh, there are archives that have his name in the archives. That's pretty much all I can really say about it. Um, but yes, that was, that was a separate, separate from yours, I believe. Uh, Santana. I mean, sorry for moving out of the frame. I'm going to put them all together. And these are just some of the albums of your Rancher book readers that I know of. Uh, there are other ones that I haven't collected the records for, which I'm, I'm going to start doing that deliberately. And then you have um, all these books, and that's not all of them. I don't have anything by Anne Rice, uh, Interviews with a Vampire, um, Jean All, the uh, Cave Bear. Right. She was, she was in Mensa, and she was a Urantia book reader. That's where she got the inspiration for her books, talking about early history of, of um, our ancestors. Had had you heard had you heard more about Anne Rice, or, or had did no. you meet anybody who talked to her? No, I have not. I did research um, some years ago. Amazon's platform was a little different, mm -hmm. so I would spend hours and hours looking up just the word Urantia, and every book that had it had 
you know, that. Uh, yeah, and she wrote it. She book. had a she had the Arantia book just appear in one of her books. Somebody walks yeah. out of the room, and there's the Arantia. Yeah, book. one of the vampires supposedly was an avid reader. You don't <laughs> come up with this kind of stuff if uh, if you haven't read it yourself. You just don't throw that kind of thing into a book. Yeah, and and I I probably told you, but I met a reader who who met her at a book signing and gave her a Urantia book. And she said, oh, thank you, I was looking for this. Or something along those lines. Hmm. She, she, she said, how did you know, like, this is something I was looking for. So. Uh, oh, that's interesting. And when you lifted up the, the stack of books, what was that little one in the middle? Um, um, Harry McKnight, Coming to Our Senses. Okay, all right. Uh, Harold Sherman. Um, it, it must've been the McKnight one. Yeah, there's, uh, now I, I'm not sure about Richard Bach, yeah. but he and Harry McKnight were really good friends. Uh, Richard Bach took the Silva classes from, through Harry, and um, Harry spoke very highly of, of Richard Bach. Mm -hmm. And knowing Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if there was conversation about the book. Yeah. Um, you also have Hubert Wilkins, Explorer, uh, it is said that the that Scientology was um, based on things that Hubbard heard in the Explorers Club from Hubert Wilkins, and then um, uh, what was his name Werner Earhart that did Est, and later became uh, Landmark. He was a Silva student, but. Um, but I don't think there's any Urantia book connection there. Um, I think it was Silva and Scientology that he built Est out of, huh. but, I'm, but I'm getting off subject. So it's just really been exciting. Um, I came across a piece of artwork and I don't know why, you know, some of these things are just serendipitous. Um, it was a piece of artwork by a, uh, an artist in the 60s and 70s called Rick Griffin. And the, the image sh shows this guy wearing a, a, a helmet and the beginning of it says that after traveling through the universe to the, through the seven super universes, arriving on paradise, this is where the story opens. And um, I, as I look further into his artwork, there's bits and pieces of the Urantia book all throughout. And then the people that he's been connected to, many of them like the Grateful Dead, uh, Jerry Garcia was a known Urantia book reader, um, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, another Urantia book reader. Uh, unfortunately, Stevie Ray Vaughan had a serious alcohol problem. And it seems that some of these artists have that. That they're that that the Urantia book helps them with a lot of the spiritual things, but maybe they don't have the real tools to handle the vicissitudes of life and tend to go to numbing themselves somehow. I, I certainly, from my personal standpoint, um, when I was younger, I could definitely have gone in that direction. Uh, I think sometimes sensitive people do not have the tools they need. And I think that for me, the Urantia book really saved my life. Um, it, it changed my direction, it changed the person that I am. And I think that that contributes to um, one of the reasons why it's so exciting for me to find celebrities, because these people are having effects on other people's lives, sometimes in very subtle ways, sometimes more openly, like with Carlos Santana, um, Carrie Livgren with Kansas, never talked about it, but Carry On My Wayward Son, Dust in the Wind, those are two songs that um, are obviously inspired by the Arantia book. I guess- really, how, how, What's the connection with Dust in the Wind? Um, well, I, you really have to look at the lyrics, it's just, and, and sometimes when you, when you read the lyrics or listen to it in the music, you have to kind of change the way you hear things. Um, 
being a Urantia book reader for over 40 years, you, you begin to hear um, concepts that are not common in normal life, in, in Christian or Buddhist or in other religions. And you go, hmm, that sounds uh, pretty high-minded and unusual. You know, you have uh, Jaco Pastorius with Havona, um, all these different artists and there are bits and pieces that they throw out there almost as, as if it's a tease. So that's really the, my excitement in trying to find celebrities there's so many of them, and you and I have a long, long list that we've been working on together off and on. Um, and I guess that, you know, that would be um, my, my reasoning for all of this is just these people have touched so many lives, whether it's subtle or, or in your face. Yeah, it's it's a pretty amazing, isn't it? And also kind of this, it's this weird juxtaposition where, you know, I've known about the Orange Book basically my whole life. And I just kind of thought nobody, almost nobody knows about it. There's just a few people here and there. And, and that is kind of true still that very few people have read it. And then to find out that there's such this disproportionate amount of musicians and artists and authors, it's, it's really striking. It's like a, there's an underwater river going on and we're not aware of it. I was, um, it was in uh, January, we were visiting friends of ours, Avi and Leela Dagim, uh, other friends, John Lang was there. And we were in Manhattan, we were walking across a busy street It had a, a boulevard median in the middle. So as we're walking across, there's a group of people coming towards me. There's a woman in a wheelchair, somebody pushing her. But I spot a guy that has a Grateful Dead shirt on, an older guy. I mean, of course, I'm 67, and I still look at people my age as, God, old people. Uh, but I saw this guy, and as I walk up to him, I said, oh, Grateful Dead shirt. Did you know Jerry Garcia was a, is a Urantia book reader? He said, a what? And the lady in the wheelchair says, oh, yeah, that's a great book. And I almost crapped. I just thought, you know, when I was younger, um, you'd never run into people that heard of the book. And here I am in the middle of Manhattan, and I just throw something out there. Occasionally, I'll do that just, you know, to plant a seed. Maybe this person will look this up. And somebody responds. Um, we South Salvador Dali Museum in St. Petersburg about eight years ago had a big, big uh, party with food and alcohol. It was um, dressing in the 60s and 70s. So I don't really have clothes like that. So I did the best I could. But I had heard that Salvador Dali may have had the Urantia book. Um, and it's possible, you know, there's Walt Disney, who was a friend of Salvador Dali's. But it all came from, uh, oh, what, what was her name? Um, Violet Blue, who was a friend of um, Andy Warhol. And she's a reader. So anyway, I yeah, brought ultra, you. Ultraviolet, right. Ultraviolet, that's it. And so I wrote up a little sheet of paper about these connections and uh, went to this party carrying the book around with 10 sheets of paper. I figured that was more than I needed, but I'd make this letter, make 10 of them. Um, when I'm making copies in the hotel, uh, the lady said, yeah, I'll make them. How many you want? 10. So she comes back and she says, oh my God, I've been trying to get my son to read this book. And Bill Beasley and I are sitting there looking at each other like, like this is, you know, serendipity. So I gave her one of the sheets and uh, Bill talked to her and said, you know, where, how to get a study group and this and that. Um, in the museum, I had a guy walk up to me and says, oh yeah, I, I read that book years ago. I've completely forgotten about it. Um, and somebody else came up and said something about the book. So 
you know, as time goes on, more and more people find this book. And whether they become serious students of it or not, it has uh, passed somewhere through their life. Yeah, and it also seems like, um, you know, there, there's not a there's not a more fortuitous or attractive thing to be associated with than a lot of these, you know, revolutionary musicians and things like that. Because even yeah. though they didn't they didn't live the lives of saints and everything, people just are so touched by their music and you know and, and have such a special connection with them. Yeah, uh, I, I tried to uh, reach out to Graham Edge and Mike Pinder of Moody Blues and um, uh, another friend of mine, Bob Koch, um, knew Dr. Neil Armstrong. And Neil Armstrong was a big fan of the Moody Blues and according to Bob, a Urantia book reader. Um, I think he started the Noetic Sciences Organization or something like that. Anyway, I was able to get in touch with Mike Pinder, said, um, told him that um, Neil Armstrong would like to have a signed copy. Would he be interested in making that connection? And I also made a comment that he was a Urantia book reader. And everything went along pretty well until I asked Mike Pinder uh, about his reading of the book, and then I never heard from him again. He didn't ask me what's a Urantia book when I told him that Neil Armstrong was a Urantia book reader. Um, and, and, and the person who told you that Neil Armstrong was a reader uh, had, had like met him and talked to him about it or something. Yeah, yeah, has had conversations with him. Wow. Um, Bob lives in, uh, I think it's North Carolina. Uh -huh. He was also a friend of Harry McKnight's and that's how I met, met Bob. He would what, have, what's Bob's uh, last name again? K-A-L-K, Bob Call. Okay. I can send you his email. Yeah, thanks. Um, and yeah, you talked about um, the band. Uh, I think you mentioned sometime you had heard that Carl Sagan had... Um, uh, another friend, David Glass, saw Carl Sagan speak, went to an auditorium, took a book up to him. Uh, Carl Sagan said that he had heard of the book and really wasn't interested. So, okay. yeah. And, and then also there was this band Firefall. I don't know much about them, but... Um, uh, uh, yeah. Firefall, one of the, uh, I think the lead singer or somebody in the band, um, and maybe the whole band, um, were from uh, the Clearwater area in Florida. Somebody was. And uh, a friend, friend of mine, Joycey, Patterson uh, was married to a guy and um, she's an avid reader. So the book's always around. There's study groups in her home and her former husband made a comment. He says, oh yeah, so-and-so, he reads that book. And I said, who's that? And he said, you know, Firefall. Um, he lives here and um, I know him. He's, he's a book reader. So Cool. That was uh, that was from Mr. Henry and. Wow. Um, well, thanks for uh, having this conversation. Should we uh, stop the recording and chat some more? It, sure. Yeah. All right. Thanks a million, Dan. It's really great to hear your hear your story. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Nice.